See you watching me when we're with our friends. It's definitely something in the air. So let's take it from there, 'cause I know you want it. Afraid to let it show, and I know you need it. Why don't we let it grow, grow, grow? Here we are back in the workshop and I thought I'd quickly show you this is the tall on bearing that Wit is making so he's turning this for the log bearing there's our bar of tall on and there's the wastage okay so it's time to remove the P bracket sorry the cutlass bearing inside the P bracket now the last time we did this was uh, only a couple of months ago, this was just a temporary bearing we got cheap and we want to replace it with a decent one. But in the boatyard we got our mechanic to tap it out with a little tool he made using a very big hammer. And a few of you commented on the fact that this is probably not a good idea because of the forces exerted on the P-bracket. So uh, the suggestion was to make a puller instead. And that is what Wit has done right now. This is the puller. The idea being there is a little stop at the front end, which is uh, narrow enough to go inside the P-bracket. And there's a connecting rod with a nut on the end, which he does up. And as he does up that nut, it's pulling this rod through. And so it's pulling the P-bracket out. And this is a uh, much better way of removing that cutlass bearing. So. Once again, thank you very much to our YouTube viewers for this suggestion. We got rid of that diesel leak, remember? So the question you ask yourself is why is there diesel back in there? I thought for one horrible moment that it was the same leak, but it's not. What it is is down here we have our feed pipe to the engine there. It comes around this pump, this badly installed pump. That's a fuel pump. So the fuel pump is pumping the fuel out from the tank and then there's a return valve which goes back to the tank and um, either one or both of these pipes is leaking now this is not unusual with copper piping after 30 years this is uh, i've already replaced this once in another area so what tends to happen is this pipe it, it um it's lying on the floor now it is fixed in place so it can't move too much but over 30 years that has started to leak what i'm doing is replacing it not with more copper pipe but with um, just rubber hose which is pretty much the same as this stuff here so there we go. we've got some new rubber hose here and then there's the return pipe which is the old copper pipe so what i'll probably do is i'll i'll just cut this somewhere i don't know somewhere down there just to feed this into the new pipe and then just run hose. A little tip, if ever you're working on your boat, try and remove as much as possible when you've finished using it or you've swapped something and no longer need uh, cables or wires, take them out because there's nothing worse than six months later coming along and trying to work out what they do. Anyway, uh, here, we, here we are. This is our Algae X, which is a centrifugal um, uh, magnetic uh, algae fuel cleaner just uh, opens that up and f cleaned it up myself and uh, that's the return there so I've kept a tiny little bit of the copper pipe left just to make the connections I've now got a cable tie all these they run underneath there they run down here and through there but really important to cable tie them up so they're nice and uh, tight and then they come back here 
So I've rearranged this slightly now, excuse me. Um, so I've just made this area a little bit clearer and there's our fuel pump. And there is the return just underneath that red cable. Again, I've kept a tiny little bit of copper pipe left just to connect the two and I'll um, zip tie those so that they are nice and secure. So I need to now make sure the leak is no longer leaking. Alright, just having a break <clears throat> from uh, doing this work Poor me, I've got a frog in my throat. I feel a bit rough, I really do. Uh, the reason why I mention that is because I've just been visited by a guy called David who is a YouTube viewer and he often holidays in Thailand and happened to be in the area. So he thought we'd come down and say hello. So he popped uh, down this morning. Um, I was right knee deep in uh, changing the, the fuel line. So I was a bit covered in D's and I said, well, look, come back at lunchtime, we're going to have lunch. And I told him that I wasn't feeling particularly well. So he returned with a case of tiger beer and look, check this out. I've just been eating this. Fresh mangoes and rambutans. Very, I thought that was really thoughtful of him. It was so nice that he came down, came to say hello then knew I wasn't feeling too hot and bought me some fruit. I mean, you know, David, that's that's a really nice thing to do. Really appreciate that. And thank you very much for lunch as well. We hooked up and had some lunch and uh, I had a massive man to try and sweat out this cold thing and uh, had a nice chat with David. So really cool. David, you've set me up for the afternoon now, which means I can carry on and uh, finish off this crappy job so as I'm working my way through the fuel line with my cable ties I need to make sure they don't fly great um, and I'm working my way back to the engine <laughs> uh, So what happened there then exactly? Uh, I just got bored of the sound of my own voice to be honest Liz. Oh you're not the only one I think quite a few of us are a bit bored with the sound of your voice. I know I know we imagine what it's like for me I have to edit my own voice every single week but of course uh, in this episode effectively you're still back in the UK. Yeah I was yeah. So I'm having to do all the talking myself so I thought we'd switch it around a bit and we'll just have a chat here instead. Okay so it looked to me like you were doing a bit of cleaning there Jamie. That's right, yes, cleaning the engine. Now, we were given a bottle of Nulan, which is a Kiwi-developed uh, lanolin-based spray. And one of the things we were told to use it for was cleaning the engine. So normally I'd use WD-40, and the problem with WD-40 is that once you spray it on, it evaporates very quickly and just leaves a horrible film of oil. So with the lanolin, and of course most of you are familiar with lanolin in the marine environment, is very, very good. Put it on your turnbuckles when you re-rig, put it on your battery terminals, and put it on your engine when you clean it up because it lasts so much longer. Okay. And in fact, the Nulan product is, uh, it, it's got all sorts of accreditations with the food health and safety standards. So I think you could, you could almost eat the stuff. Bloody hell. And of course it won't hurt in the environment, will it? Absolutely, yeah. Just like to point out that we aren't uh, being paid for this. You no. actually love the product. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we use lanolin anyway, but it's so nice to have it in a product that you can, that you can spray on. Uh, there's quite a few out there, but uh, we're sticking with Nulan. It seems like a really good product. Great, good. Okay, so what else did you get up to while I was away? Okay, what else was there? So put a new impeller on. Um, as you know, you saw in the refit, we put a new door in the front of our engine compartment. So we now have access to all areas of the engine. So changing the impeller is that much easier. Yeah. It uh, needed it? it yep, yeah, it certainly did, yeah. Uh, put the new depth sounder in. Ray, Ray, hooray! <laughs> and it works. Even better. Yep, that's all good. And uh, oh, we took delivery of a new chain as well. Now I saw that and I was absolutely delighted because I got so fed up with that rusty old chain. Yeah, I mean, it was on its way out. It, well, I think we could have got another couple of seasons out of it, yeah. but we'd already galvanized it once. And we have it on good authority that you can only really galvanize uh, the chain twice in its life so it could have lasted us a couple more seasons but we figured we're in the right place to get a new chain so we have that uh, save 20 meters of our old chain okay so we have 120 meters effectively of, right. of chain uh, which 
should be just enough to see us clear of places like uh, the Aleutian Islands where there's some pretty deep anchorages. Yeah, there are, there are. And it's also pretty important to change it because of the big uh, crossing we're going to do and all the anchoring we're going to be doing. So yeah, so glad you did that. Yeah, well whilst we did that, of course, we beef beefed up all of our ground tackle. Now we brought the chain through East Marine and East Marine very kindly gave us five links of 12 mil chain. Mm -hmm. So our normal chain is 10 mil but we've put 12 mil chain between the anchor and the swivel. Right. Okay, now swivels, very divisive subject. Yes. Lots of people will tell you that swivels are not a good idea. Well, if you go over to Viv Cox's website, and you know we're friends with Viv, we, we, we know him, we often consult him. He's on, a bit of a guru, isn't he? He is a guru. Brilliant. He, on his website, he actually did some tests of swivels, and a lot of the swivels, Bad, bad news, not a good idea. But there are some good swivels out there. And in fact, I think in his conclusion, he even states that a couple of swivels that are available are even stronger than your actual chain. Right. And so we have one of those. Okay, it's all about the connectors though, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Well, it's a Kong swivel. So because we have that extra space and we have a new shackle. Now in this clip now that you're seeing of our new ground tackle system, there's an older shackle. Well, it's a new shackle, but you actually brought one back from the UK. A better one, a, yeah. An even better one. Yeah. So we have a half inch shackle, five links of 12 mil chain, the Kong swivel, which then connects directly to our 10 mil, new 10 mil chain. Mm. Okay, so. Beefed up, feeling a bit more. Should be all good. Yeah, feeling yeah. a lot more confident with that. So if you remember in last week's episode, we invited our resident rigger, Jai, to come on board and inspect Esper's rigging. Uh, also, he very kindly allowed us to throw a camera in his face and bang him a whole load of questions on rigging. So we recorded a comprehensive interview with a rigger. Yes, we did. Uh, it's a long interview, so we're just going to show the beginning of it here. Mm. There isn't enough time in this episode to include the entire thing. But we are going to show the entire thing on Patreon, and at some point in the future it will come out as an extra on YouTube. I think you're going to really enjoy it because it answers a lot of the questions that came up in discussion after last week's video. Yeah, we got loads of comments and really good comments from you Very guys cool. as well. Uh, one of the burning questions was Dyneema and the use of Dyneema as, a, as rigging. And that's one of the questions that Jai answers. And we also ask him to give us some tips on how we as cruisers can keep an eye on our rigging. Uh, but uh, here's the first part of that interview in which he discusses Esper's rigging. When we invite you over to look at the rigging, what are the sort of main areas that you as a rigger are kind of looking at? Yeah. So I started with the deck, with the chain plates. Ideally, we should check on deck and below deck levels, all mm -hmm. chain plates for stainless steel. Any failure, tired, something worn out, maybe corrosion, cracks, and then deck fittings are gone through. And I started, uh, and then I moved to terminals. I've gone through all terminals, checked uh, swages. You have swageless terminals, mm -hmm. so they may crack at the top. Each of them has their own downsides, mm. but generally mechanical terminals are very good. So I checked for cracks, where they meet the cables, any kind of you know cable. I was looking for cables if they gave up or loose, anything was wrong with them. So I checked the clovis pins, uh, just, to, just to be clear, the clevis pins are the, so they're the big, large big bolts going yeah. through the turnbuckles and between the terminals. So they obviously take a lot of strain, those clevis yeah. pins, don't they? They take lots. Yeah. And they, you, you see, when you pull them out, you see corrosion on them most of the time if it's an old clevis pin. Ideally, you replace them. Mm -hmm. You don't keep them rusty and old with cracks. I have many samples here. You can see big cracks on them. Some of them even open the vent itself. Mm before it breaks. Misaligned wires, if they were pulling in the wrong angles, mm -hmm. where the terminals uh, meet wire itself. So you only had one of them. Mm -hmm. you, I indicated that one sure. on the starboard side. Yeah. And that was from the wrong tuning of the rig. Your, your rig was out of alignment and one of the spreaders were pulling slightly aft. Mm -hmm. You could see with the gaps between the, where the spreaders are sitting on the bases. And other things I looked were the halyards, any chafe, uh, the pulleys and sheaves, all blocks we've gone through, winches we've gone through. Mm -hmm. 
the chafe, I was looking for chafe on the halyards mm -hmm. also. Like uh, your staysail halyard was the wrong one. Yeah. Yeah, the one underneath of the staysail should be used to create the correct angle. Sure. That's why probably you had quite difficult furling in and out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was jumping like your preventers on top of your furler to wrap preventers. Yeah, so this is the uh, plastic, plastic ball that bits. sits at the top. Yeah, the, of the one of foil. them, the, uh, the foresail one was broken. Mm -hmm. That would uh, chafing on the rope yeah. and eventually it's going to cut the rope. Yeah, sure. While it's working. I checked the holes on your mast. You had few odd holes, not filled, not tapped. Mm -hmm. There were no fittings on them. So that's not very good. Mm -hmm. They should be closed. And the uh, cleats, you had uh, in some of the winch connections, you had missing bolts here and there. No Teflon washers used on the split pins, chafing on the boom mm -hmm. and mast itself. Those kind of things, not nice mm -hmm. because you, you could see on the photos as well, you have lots of chafe on the aluminium and on, underneath is already getting corroded. Sure. And in some areas, no Tef gel used or Duralac or Lanolino. Mm -hmm not used so when you done the installations in very, sh very short time corrosion developed around of course this, so this is stainless stainless yeah. and aluminium yeah when we did the refit we couldn't get hold of tef gel unfortunately and it's amazing in just four years how yeah. much that has corroded. corroded yeah so we hope that gives you a little taster from our rigor if you want to see the entire thing head on over to patreon and you can watch the complete interview yeah it's a good one it's a good one. Okay, well, we'd just quickly like to thank, just before we go, a few people who have come to visit us because you saw in this episode, David came to visit and very kindly bought me some fruit because I was feeling a bit under the weather. <laughs> there was no one here to look after me. So thank you very much for that, David. Um, but there's a few other people that have swung by to say yeah, hello. Yeah, it's been great. Yeah. We had um, Verna, who's a Patreon, who was driving a thousand miles <laughs> from North Thailand to Malaysia or Singapore. I think he was going he? to Singapore or something ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, and he dropped in to say hello hello on his way down which was great so we had lunch with Verna so lovely nice, to meet you Verna nice to meet you Verna uh, then we had uh, was it Mark Nick Nick yeah, yeah little, Nick little, little Nick Hi, who Nick. turned up uh, he was here with his parents they were doing a little bit of sailing and uh, he asked his father to bring him around in a long tail just to come and say hello which was really nice Nick so very knowledgeable young chap, wasn't he? Really I knowledgeable, I mean, frighteningly so. And it was great to see him. We're just sorry, Nick, we couldn't spend a little bit more time with you because we were right in the middle of a number of yeah, jobs, Yeah, we were swapping know. seacocks and doing video editing. So sorry about that, Nick. Um, next time, just give us a little bit of warning and uh, we'd love to spend lunch with you. So yeah, yeah nice to meet you. There was uh, another German guy that lives in this area, around the Krabby area. Yeah. And he came down, again, it was unannounced and I was in the middle of another job, but uh, he stopped by just for half an hour just to have a discussion about uh, additives for fuel. Yeah. So it's an interesting chat, but I was kind of hands dirty in the middle of something. So I've forgotten your name, really sorry about that, but because you're in the area, please do swing by and come and say hello again. And then recently we've had Mel, yeah, an another, another Patreon. Yeah. Um, Mel contacted us beforehand and so we said, we'll come over at lunchtime, I'll come over in the evening, we'll have a beer. And if you do want to swing by and see us, we would love to see you, wouldn't mm. we? We really would love to see you, anybody, uh, but just give us a tiny bit of warning so at least we're dressed properly and can talk to you. But we had a great time with Mel. Yeah, he's doing a refit similar to what mm. we're doing. And so he's doing the right thing. He's going around all of the boat yards yep. and the marinas in this area and checking them out and getting some prices and a feel for the places that he was potentially going to haul out and do his refit in. So I think, you know, he's definitely he's doing the right yeah, thing. Yeah, he's down at PSS right now. He is. OK, well, in the meantime, don't forget, please do share, like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Absolutely. In the meantime, peace and fair winds. I didn't mention, by the way, uh, if you see one of us faint and fall down, it's because we've got a guest in here, haven't we? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we got Cobra snake. at the workshop, <laughs> so I've been dealing with it. I can't catch him because i got so much ropes and this guy is living amongst there somewhere. I'll, <laughs> I, will, I will hunt him down today and put him out there in another neighbourhood. <laughs> Pet snake, eh? Yeah. Nice. It's a Cobra. Cobra.